So I looked at the Furious FPV True D version 3.5 diversity receiver earlier in a live feed. And it was the first time I saw it and I'd gone through it and just looked at it, hit or miss what I found. Now I'm going to do a closer look at it with a better camera and we'll see what we can see this time a little bit closer up. So stay tuned. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. So I've got two right hand circular polarized antennas on here right now and this is the Xair 5.8 supposed to have really good reception it's a patch antenna this TBS antenna on there too which is supposed to be really good as far as circular polarized okay so I've got two antennas on there and the reason is it's diversity and it can switch between them but let's just look at some of the basic things about this First of all, I showed you how well the cover fit. This contour fits much better, and there's some clips on the side that really lock in good right now. They've also got this section right here raised a little bit above the, the OLED to protect the screen. So if you hit something against that, it won't scratch the screen as easily. They've also got a hole cut out in the case so you can access the USB port without taking the module out of the cover. In fact, you probably will never take the module out of the cover. It's not supposed to be coming out. And to prevent it from coming out, they now have two bars, two plastic bars across the bottom right here to keep it locked in there so it won't fall out. So the combination of it locking into the bay really snugly and these bars to keep it from falling out uh, really work well. Work well for me. And it does have the three buttons that were added in earlier versions instead of the little dial wheel or just one button. There are three buttons for ease of access to the menus. So it now comes with a 90 degree bend SMA connector and also a 45 degree bend. It comes with the case, so that's a $10 value, I guess. So that's free with the module. $79.95, I think, is what it runs. Here's what the box looks like, and you can see it's the version 3.5, and there's the uh, part numbers and the barcode. And you can see when it first comes up, it comes up with the logo and then goes to the frequency that you last set it at. And it's saying I got a low signal because I do. I don't have a transmitter going right now. From what I've seen so far, very clear picture, and it's also race band ready, so it has some race band frequencies in there. And it even has a frequency that you can user define if you want to add a frequency. And I'll show you how to do that later. So right now the lock feature is on and it's locked. So when I hit these buttons, it really doesn't do anything because it's locked. So what you have to do is hold the middle button. And then it says unlock. You press it again, it becomes unlocked. And then you can hit the middle button once and it'll enter the menu mode and then you can step through the menus so I'm going to be using one of these AIO or all-in-one cameras with the transmitter I'm going to use that to test it with and this is the AKK BA3 model that I just got so 5.8 gigahertz 40 channel so these channels pretty much match the 40 channels that's on the Furious module and you can see it's going through the F-band channel 4 and it's on one bar means that it's on the very lowest milliwatt setting. I think it's got four milliwatt settings but it's on the 25 milliwatt setting. Okay let's start out with doing the smart search. So I'll go down here till I get to smart search and press the middle button and it starts searching for the frequency. And it's filling in all right. Now you can see right here that it's actually picked up band F and the fourth one over, which is F4, which the camera is on. But it's also picking up some sideband information, so it's bleeding over into some of the other bands, and that's why we actually see five frequencies here instead of just one. So that's normal, especially when you're up close like this. It will bleed into the other bands, but it did find it. Okay, so now that we've found the frequency we want, we can actually save it by holding the middle button, and then it goes to save, just press it again, and now it's saved, and it's gone into the working menu. Okay, so let's go to the working menu right here, 
And this is like the favorites. The same thing as favorites. And you can see there's the frequency that I'm on right now. You can step through the working menu if there's any other frequencies in there. And there is, it'll pick up some of them. There's not too many in here right now, but it will step around in there. But right now it's just got that one favorite. And you can delete the favorite, like if you wanted to go in and then come down and press delete, press delete again, it deletes it out of there. Now if I was to turn off the goggles, or turn off the Furious True D, and then turn it back on, it's coming up with the next one in the working menu, or the favorites. Now we're in manual mode right here. So let's just go ahead and enter manual mode. Now in manual mode, you can actually step through all of the bands and frequencies. Just going through them, seeing what it can find. You can't step through in order of frequency though. It just goes by band and then 1 through 8 in each band. So there it's picked up F4 5800 right there again. And you can hold the button, save it once more, like that. So that's another one to, you can use instead of the smart scan to pick up the frequency of your channel. You can just hold the top button and that will change to the next band. So every time you hold the button down for a second, that top button, it'll change to the next band. And then you can step through the frequencies within that band. So that's another way you can do it to get there a little quicker if you think you know what band your frequency is on. Like I know mine's on Fat Shark. So I could just keep doing holding, long pressing until it gets to F, and then I can step through those frequencies until I find the one that goes with my transmitter right there. So no feature to step through in order of frequency, but it's by band and then by the eight frequencies within the band. Okay, let's do a little bit of diversity testing. I'm gonna move the camera about uh, 10 feet away on the other side of the room. Now you can see it's down here on the bottom on channel A, but it just switched, see when I covered the patch antenna, it switched to the other channel, channel B at the top, the red light. Okay, so you can see how it can switch back and forth. Now when I covered the top antenna, it switched to the bottom antenna for the patch. And then if I let go, it'll go back to the top. So it's just switching between which is the best antenna. And it seems to do it quite well. Now an interesting addition to this, and I think maybe the previous version had it too, but LaForge didn't have it at first, and I think you can add it to LaForge. But anyway, it's the band scanner. You can go down here, and it's kind of like a spectrum analyzer. I'll press that middle button. So it's always the middle button to select. It shows you a graphical representation of what frequencies are available in 5.8. And you can see right here in the middle it's put up 5800 as the one it's detecting in that area. It's, it's centered around that. I guess it auto centers or something. But anyway, there you go. That's how that works. Okay, now let's go into the settings part, which is right here. So enter settings. Now in settings, let's start at the top. We have the alarm at the top which shows a percentage. That's actually your RSSI alarm. So right now it's set to go off if your RSSI gets down to 20%. And you can change that to 35, 50, or none. Just like that. Okay, the time up is another alarm. And this will give you an alarm after you're up for so many minutes and that might save the battery on your goggles or let you know your battery is starting to run out but that that's just a time alarm basically okay and then the next one down is auto lock on and off and this is the lock that you saw when you first powered up you couldn't get into the menus without unlocking it that's on right now but I could turn it off so you could get right in immediately okay then the next one is units and you can see here you can either have percent dBm now this is for signal strength up that you see up here in the corners for A and B inputs so percent dBm so I'm just gonna leave it on percent alright 
Now, this is the one I was telling you about where you can enter a random frequency. It's called new F. So new F right here. You can press that and then start entering a frequency of your choice. So you can go up and down, put whatever you want in there, step along, put different ones in, give it a name, like that. So that's new F. So if you've got a frequency that isn't already programmed in here, you can add it. And that's pretty cool. And then you've got your, your call sign here, which you can put any name in there that you want. Right now it's furious. And then you have your filter. Now the filter is how aggressive it will, the diversity will switch between the channels. And right now it's on low. But you also have the, cho the choice of normal or high, like that. And then finally, there's calibrate. Now, I've tried calibrate, and it doesn't work according to the, the way the manual says, but I'll show you what it does do. Okay, so there it is. It's actually doing the calibration. But what it skipped over is there's actually a wizard in the manual that says uh, there's several screens in between when I push the button in this screen, and they actually ask you to remove the antennas and then make sure your transmitter's on and place your transmitter so many feet away depending on how much power it's putting out. So my receiver right now is sort of positioned in the 25 milliwatt range which would be around 5 or 10 feet away. So I could calibrate it in that position. And uh, you see that I did calibrate it, but I didn't save it because it's already been calibrated before. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I've got the camera here, and I'm just going to walk around with it and record so you can see the footage. Now I'm going to walk down the golf cart path, and we'll see just how far away it looks. So there it is on the board right there. All right, let's go down the golf cart path. All right. This is 25 milliwatts. Now when I get to the end of this golf cart, I'll be, uh, at the end of this path I think is close to 100 feet or more. Now I'm going out on the, out on the golf course. Hope there's no golfers out here. I don't know if you can still see me. It's getting a little snowy. But of course I'm not facing the camera either. If I face the camera and get this patch antenna aimed at it, now you can see it cleared right up. So that's another thing. So now it's using the circular polarized antenna and I'm facing away. I'm way out here now. I'm also behind some trees. So let me get over here. Okay, so it's clearing right up now. So I'm a long way away now. 25 milliwatts, and I mean, I can see crystal clear. I could probably go over the hill if there aren't any golfers. I don't see any golfers. Okay. I don't know if you can see me, but yeah, it cleared right up. Let's see what it is on, actually. Okay, so you can see it's on the patch antenna right there. And then if I tip the patch down, it switches to the circular polarized back and forth. It was there for a second, now it's not. But up like that, you can see it's using the patch. So it's definitely switching between them and doing its job. I've got the goggles back. Okay, so I think it worked really good. I was very happy with it. And uh, I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of this. It's a great little unit. So you can order these in several different websites. I got this one from HeliDirect, I think it was $79.95, free shipping because I ordered a couple of antennas and got it over $100, so they gave me free shipping. came in about five days from Massachusetts, but there's also HeliPal, GetFPV, a whole bunch of others that you can purchase it from, and of course there's the box again right there. As far as uh, battery drain, just to wrap it up, I've uh, been running this during the whole review, it's probably taken me... I'd say probably uh, at least 45 minutes to put this together and I still got half a battery so yeah I think it's going to be just fine it uses more power than your regular fat shark receivers but maybe not as much as I thought it would looks like I can still use the standard battery if I want to okay so that's it if you got any questions just leave them under the video 
Give me a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. It's all good for reviews. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content. Thanks for watching.